Hello, tubers, Mescal here. So I'm taking the lid off this to tune the RF box inside. There's a little, um, little bit of ghosting, and I noticed it wasn't coming apart. There's a tab just in this one here. A view on that tab there it is so screwdriver in there push that tab back and get the light on it again so I've got this one held open I'll just pop that one and I'll notice there's another one right in the middle there so three tabs to get the lid off let's have a look and there was a little mylar ribbon thing, which must have been a fairly new invention back then. I just want to be careful that I don't bend that. That should just pop out of there. Okay. Uh, this one looks different to the one that I was looking at. Where's my RF out? RF out's over there. Looks like that's a tuning pot in there. Atari 1983. Okay, so let's plug it in and power it up and adjust that pot and see what happens to the ghosting. Uh, put game in. And where's my on switch? Oh, those switches are connected through. Not using mylar. Okay, so that's power. So you can see there's a bit of ghosting. And it is more pronounced on the numbers makes things look a little bit crappy so let's try and dial that out uh, is that going to be down in there? there's a hex screw on the uh, the one I saw tuned yeah that's a hex I don't know if uh, my blades going to fit in there, no is that one going to fit? No, I do have some RF tuning tools in the shed. I'll be back in a sec. Tubers Mezcal here. I just walked outside and saw this on the ground and a little uh, finch of all tiny, tiny birds was attacking it. Beautiful green grocer. Standard wings, not like that weird one I found recently that had the leaf green uh, on the outer wings. And he was just on the ground over here, so I guess he's been attacked. But uh, let's get him back up into the air. Let's hope he doesn't get eaten while he flies away. Well, that wasn't a very successful fly away. Try again, buddy. Without all the singing. Can't fly very well. Oh, that'll do. Proper RF tuning tools. Hopefully, there's the right hex key here. They're made of nylon or something so that you don't get any uh, hand capacitance or change. Yeah, perfect. Getting worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not good.
Oh, that's not actually helping me. Oh, no signal altogether. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. Just looking at um, that piece of track there, it's it's quite a large unshielded section of um, of the signal wire that comes out of the RF box. On the earlier models. The RF came straight out of the back of one of these, and um, obviously that would negate any of um, any interference due to poor shielding. You can see that shield wire follows the same architecture as the trace, and so it's sort of it's kind of like shielded, but it's not really shielded in as much as it's being a back plane. Uh, I didn't really like being flipped over either. I did try to in inject some RF onto it by having the phone nearby. Oh, well, that doesn't look happy. I'm just turning it there. Noticing that this trace here is completely unshielded uh, in as much that uh, the top side behaves as a ground plane and is a wider trace but the bottom side completely unshielded. Um, I put some tape on there to insulate it and then just held a bit of foil over there in the right spot to emulate some RF shielding and it made zero difference to the image on the screen so that's a fail um, I guess the next thing to do uh, other than some sort of filter at this point here um, I could also try flipping to channel 2 I think it's on 3 at the moment and then retuning the telly to the other one and then playing around with that RF uh, output Again, <laughs> doing. Hey, it's an RF tuning tool. Huh. It goes in here, Moo. Huh? Yep, it goes in there. Like this. Okay? Yay! Okay?